The state of California has officially banned all legacy admissions for all colleges. Let's talk about who this is going to affect and what people are saying. Oh, Muffy, I'm a little bit worried about the admissions for Cody and Becky. They've gotten rid of affirmative action for rich white people. Uh, we got to talk about this. California bans legacy donor admissions in all colleges and universities, Andrew. That means no matter how much money your family has given to a school or how many generations of your family has gone to a college such as Stanford, Santa Clara, Claremont, or USC, it doesn't mean you get any bump. Ah! All right, guys, I do think that most people like that they ban are banning all legacy admissions, and uh, but... There's a lot of feedback and there's still so some other people who are disagreeing with the decision, but we're all going to get into it. So let us know. Hit that like button and check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. Check out Smile Last Sauce on Amazon right now. Look at this comment, Andrew. Lol, my friends from with Stanford alum parents are effing devastated right now, blowing up the text chain. Uh. So some kids, Andrew, whose parents went to Stanford and were needing that extra bump to get in are super worried now. All right, yeah. I mean, there's also people who are just like, wow, legacy kids have to actually work to get admitted into the school like everybody else. And I think the thing that is really shocking about this, Andrew, is because it's affecting private universities. Right. For the longest time, the UC system has banned all, like, this has been in place for many decades in the UC system. Right, right. And generally, a lot of people feel like, I would say previously that private colleges, these elite institutions, they operate privately. So why don't they get to do and admit who they want, right? Right, right, right. Because they do not receive state funds for operational costs. However, they do receive state funds in the terms of grants, scholarships for certain kids, Cal grants, research mm. contracts, and things mm. like that. All right, guys. So we're going to talk about what this means. We have about five points on what this means and who it's going to affect because obviously, uh, is this good for Asian students, all Asian students, or most Asian students, and what other students may benefit or get hurt from this? Let's talk about it. Right, right, right. And this comes on the heels of an affirmative action ban on all um, institutions from the Supreme Court. Right. So, guys, there's no more affirmative action in admit college admissions and no legacy admissions. All right. First off, we got to say this, Andrew. I think that this is primarily relevant at Stanford and USC. Right. Because the thing is, California actually doesn't have that many, like, old world legacy institutions. There is a couple, you know what I mean? But really Stanford and USC are the only ones that come into mind. We're not talking about the Northeast of America right, right. now. Right, well, I mean, there's Claremont Colleges, Chapman College, there's- uh, LMU. There are LMU. There are some private colleges, of course, but of course, USC and Stanford are the big ones that, you know, everybody wants to apply for. Right, right, right. So anyway, here's a few things. Number one, Andrew, it means that schools will probably have more Asians and less whites. That theoretically, that is what it should, that would be well, the impact. The, the, that's your guess because Asians are usually merit wise, they're usually the strongest students. So they're, so the, the, the Stanford is going to become more Asian. Well, I read this study online and I had to chat GPT, double check this. Up to 50% of white students are estimated in terms of Ivy League institutions, Andrew, of the white students are uh, either legacy or donation. For up to 43%. Well, it in says, Harvard. yeah, literally it said 43% at Harvard. That's the actual number. But I heard when you include like kids that are there on like a rowing scholarship or something like that, it's up to 50%. So that's a lot. Now, now. And, and the reason why Gavin Newsom, he did this, Andrew, is because he's saying that just because you come from a, like an old money family in America that's very powerful, very connected, and donated a lot of money, and you've been rich for like multiple generations, that shouldn't just give you a huge boost on your admissions rating. Mm. Yeah, Gavin Newsom himself is from a pretty good family. But anyways, guys, uh, yeah, I mean, I also don't want to say that all legacy students are white. There are actually, like, legacy students of other races as well, but just not as many. Oh, way, way, way less. Yes, way statistically. less. Statistically. Um, point number two, Andrew. Does this equalize things since they took away affirmative action? Affirmative action was designed for many disenfranchised groups, but probably the one that primarily comes to mind are black and Latino students, uh, statistically maybe coming from diff more difficult family backgrounds, right? It's designed to equalize things. And uh, I was like really thinking about it. And uh, I was like, if you look at uh, Latinos, they were actually indigenous 
uh, Latinos, Andrew, they were used as slaves to the Spanish conquistadors. Obviously, African Americans for a long time uh, were used as slaves by white people in America, mm -hmm. or by the original, I guess, founding Anglo-Saxon people. So I guess they that's what affirmative action was designed in 1970 to equalize. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why affirmative action didn't apply to Asians as much is because Asians haven't been in America, I, I guess, for those like uh, sorted histories, mm. right? So that's why Asians, it's not that I don't think any Asians got affirmative action, but it did, wasn't applied to Asians at a very strong level. Yeah, and also a lot of people say that affirmative action mostly benefited white women. It, uh, it benefited women the most, and it ended up benefiting white women the most. Right, right, right. And interestingly enough, Andrew, disabled and white women were added into the uh, affirmative action later right. because affirmative action came from the civil rights act well here's this news article of this father this black father who was a yale graduate who wanted his daughter to be a legacy admissions for yale and this is his perspective play the clip nick believes the combination of ending legacy admissions and affirmative action will negatively impact people of color disproportionately. His daughter, Mari, did end up going to Yale and is now in medical school. As more Black students have been able to go to that school, more Black legacies are kind of created. It's not like this, this, uh, this turnkey where you end legacy admissions and now we have a fair admissions process. So interestingly enough, he's saying, he's suggesting that eliminating affirmative action and legacy admissions will actually hurt some black students. I wish this segment was longer so he could explain, but I'm assuming because his daughter would have counted as a, a black legacy student. So that's why he does. He still wants legacy students because like there are some black legacy families, but they if you, if you cut off legacy admissions now for all schools, which they're not at Yale yet, but I'm saying like then the black legacies almost don't get a chance to live out their legacy. Right, right. There are some, uh, I guess like, black people who entered the elite of the American uh, society that won't be able to utilize that skill that they... Right, but this is just in California for now anyway, so... Um, by the way, I do not think they could get this passed in the Northeast. I think there would be way too much mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. powerful wins against it. Point number three, Andrew. Do you think this will make rich white people want to leave California even in larger numbers than they're already leaving? Uh, that's pretty funny. I. That's a funny thought. I guess, maybe... You well, know? well, yeah. Well, I mean, between all the taxes, the homeless, and now little Nikki is not going to get a bump at Stanford or, or God, right. even USC. I mean, what's the point of being here right. in California? All right. Do you think it is right or wrong considering, like, let's say, for example, you're a rich white dad who went to Stanford or USC and you want your kid to go and then you feel like maybe you uh, donated some money or you've donated, uh, maybe multiple generations have gone to this school. Do you feel like it's wrong for them to want to preserve that privilege? Like, because they feel like they've contributed to the school being uh, having high earning alumni or maybe having uh, some sort of like booster base. Yeah, yeah the I sports mean, we're going to see what impacts this has because obviously a lot of the legacy admissions, those are children of families that did donate money to the college. So now you're not going to have incentive to donate as much to the college. Alumni will not have as much incentive to donate to the private college because they know that their kids or family members are not going to get the privileges which they're kind of like, in a way, paying for. So I guess we'll see what happens. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I just know that for anybody who's not rich, they think this is the right move. This sounds like the right move. Right, but because I you, guess we, you, have you, no, you, you, we just don't know the impacts to the college yet. Right, right. We have no idea how the donor base is going to react that is like old money or something yeah. like that. Um, number four, Andrew, yeah, like we said, everybody's going to look at laws and how it affects their own specific positioning. When I was reading through the comments, Andrew, there was old rich white people in the New York Times comments section and like the Stanford subreddit that were kind of like, they didn't know how to feel about it. But obviously, if you're not a rich legacy, then you're like, yeah, why not do away with legacy? Right. But then if you were just, let's say you were the first generation to go to Stanford and then you're like, you thought you were going to help your kid get into Stanford by the fact that you had just gone to Stanford to start a new legacy. Now you're now there is no more legacy. But you're like, I worked so hard to try to adopt this accent so I could enter the American elite, and now I'm being stripped of the ability to uh, in the continuity of my eliteness. Uh, I think 
that potentially this could, this attitude of kind of like, I guess, going back to meritocracy, which is funny in California. Some people think it's ironic because California schools uh, were trying to do like a super uh, quota system for a while for certain high for elite high schools, right? So there was this whole talk about, oh, California's leaning away from meritocracy. And then now this is a very merit-based initiative to ban all the legacy admissions. So I guess what I'm saying is if this ends up to be good in the next five, 10 years, people are going to see the results and maybe it starts to influence how people think in other industries like politics or the movie industry or the financial industry for jobs because there's a lot of kids who are getting jobs due to connections and due to legacy in those places. Well, specifically, you were referring to highly monetized fields that are like over a hundred years old. I see a lot less legacy in tech than versus, you know, like old world banking and stuff like that. Well, tech honestly has barely been around big enough, long, like long enough for there to be legacy. Like now it's about 30 some years. And also sort of, would you agree the ethos of tech is sort of like, if you can't program this, I'm not going to give you the job because you're somebody's son. Yeah. It's not, it's not, has, it's not as networking as a golf, golf, buddy buddy system old boy system um anyway guys so let's talk about this there was a lot of comments were saying the schools need the legacy to be a high value network so basically they're saying if stanford or if let's just say this trend was to go to all the ivy leagues and all the ivy leagues are a bunch of just like really super focused nerds and i'm thinking that people got to be thinking it's going to be full of asians to be honest with no family connections or only family connections in asia what will be the value of networking at those elite colleges right i guess this is kind of like one of those unspoken things that people talk about where it's like what makes harvard harvard what makes is it just the professors is it the classrooms probably not because you can learn everything on youtube nowadays yeah, well, I mean, there's, there's like Harvard books symposiums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like literally, there's like lectures on YouTube. So, what is it about these elite universities that make them elite? And it's probably the network, and it's the network, and that is that is the truth. But for so long, that network really more benefited more so a certain group. But I don't want to say because you're talking about of, old rich white people. Yeah, right? but a lot of Jewish Asians people. still go to Harvard, and they still benefited from it in different ways. You know, on different levels. And there's black people went to Harvard, Hispanics that went to Harvard, foreigners that went to Harvard. So I'm saying like. But I guess that is a point, and I, I'm, I was always personally more of the stance like, hey, if a private college wants to do something, they do have more freedom to do it, in my opinion. But also, I'm not a legacy kid, so I can't, I'm not mad at this. Right, and your, our family, obviously, we weren't even in America. Like, our family hasn't even been in America long enough to be yeah. legacies, to be honest. Um. Somebody said, you guys do realize that Asians are the richest group of people, not whites. Because somebody said, yep, they finally ended white affirmative action. And then uh, someone was like saying that basically, nah, if you know a lot of the kids that are legacy admittance, basically like they're uh, super lazy or they're just like party kids. Right, right. Um, I think there's a variance. I think Uh, some kids are and some kids aren't. You know what I mean? To be honest, like... Um, technically, if you come from like a really rich legacy family, you could have taken your privilege to have a really impressive, like college resume, but some of the kids basically did just party all the time and then still get into the elite school. Um, are schools going to be 99% Asian now, Andrew? There's a bunch of comments now saying, because even Scott Galloway, who's become like a famous talking head, Andrew said that some high tier colleges would be around 60 to 70% Asian if it was solely based on hard metrics. Mm. I guess that's what people are saying. Do you think this will create an Asian majority like it has at schools like MIT or Berkeley or even UCLA? Yeah, I wonder what the colleges are going to say about... uh, Do you know how like colleges would always say like, oh, we just don't take only hard metrics into consideration. We want to take your personality. Are they still going to say that even if legacy admissions are banned? You know what I mean? Like, are they still going to stand by that? I wonder. You know what I think? I think that that if you come from a hyper-privileged legacy family, you're just going to need to deploy your money earlier and not just donate to the school, but you're actually going to need it to invest it in your child to make sure they have a more compelling case. Right, right, Like, make them do more interesting stuff or start a charity or something. I mean, do you think some people in the comments think that, you know, rich and privileged people, they're going to get a way around it? Just because legacy admissions is banned... That just means legally legal, legacy admissions are banned, but it's like 
these kids could probably still, like, if the admission officer still sees the name and recognizes the name and wants to let them through, they probably still can. Yeah, like, they might make paddle, like, the sport from Spain that's really only available for rich people because the courts are so expensive. Like, they might make that, like, a 50-person team, and that's going to be a way for rich kids to play paddle, get on a, get on a, get on Stanford. Mm, mm. Um, somebody, of course, Andrew, this sport, spiraled into arguing about why so many Asians were against affirmative action when they should have been against legacies the whole time. Mm. But then basically, I feel like this is what happened. The Supreme Court ruled that uh, they're gonna be, there's going to be no more affirmative action in terms of college ad admissions, right? So California wants to equalize that by getting rid of legacies. All right, all right, Do you see what I'm saying? Because, because California is obviously thinking so progressive. All right. And um, I guess what my whole thing was like, I do think historical injustices need to be taken in consideration. And I do think there do, does need to be help given to like underserved or disenfranchised communities. But I just don't know if fixing it at the college level is the right way to do it. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I always believed in affirmative action, but I, I thought it needed reform because mm. maybe the way it was done was clunky. Um, yeah. And then of course, Andrew, the bunch of comments about California always leading the way. And I just think California is really, really progressive to be fair, but some of their progressive policies are good and some of them don't really work out. Like I'm not a big fan of bail reform where basically criminals just get back out on the street without bail. That doesn't make any sense to me. Mm -hmm. But then obviously getting rid of legacies, that was that was a cool thing that they did. Yeah, I, I think uh, for me, I'm very excited to see how it goes in the next 10 years, uh, watching this play out. And uh, I think overall it is good though. I think it's overall the right move. Um, I don't think all the colleges are going to follow suit. I don't think Ivy League colleges are going to do it. But uh, they're going to use California as an experiment. So California, it's on you, man. The world is watching. What happens when you cut legacy admissions? What happens when the legacies in America are no longer considered legacies? Let us know what you guys think in the comments section below, guys. Big move by the state of California. But like we said because there was only Stanford and USC that I feel like were the elite institutions and USC is not really elite. It's for rich kids, but it's like, you know what I mean? That people wanted to go to. That's where I feel like it'll be a, it'll be an interesting case. It'll be an interesting case to see if this spreads all across America in a decade or two. Save the legacy students, save them. Who else is going to be on the rowing team? Anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below until next time with the hot pot boys. We out. Peace. Peace.